Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. I'm happy to welcome you to this insightful discussion about the ins and outs of automatic license plate recognition. My name is Cassandra, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Precise Parklink. I'm happy to be here with you today as your moderator. Joining me today is Jay Bensal, Senior Systems Engineer, and Cynthia Bruce, Senior Proposal Writer here. And also here with us today is guest speaker Michael Bias, Vice President of Office Property Management at Smart Centers. There are a few things I would like to address before we get started. Please enter your name and organization in the Q&A chat to enter into our prize draw. The winner will be announced on Precise Park Link's LinkedIn within the coming days, so stay tuned. We will also be accepting questions in the chat as well, so be sure to enter your question as well as who are you, are, you are addressing it to in the chat. So on the agenda for today, we will be discussing automatic license plate recognition, otherwise known as ALPR and its role in the Canadian. Then we'll be covering the basics of automatic license plate recognition and parking. Uh, Michael Bias will take it from here to discuss his experience with LPR at Smart Centers Transit City. We will then give you an inside scoop on why LPR is a popular interest amongst all markets and its unlimited possibilities. Then we'll cover the various transient LPR parking models and their hardware and software components to consider. We'll then share the questions you need to ask when making the investment and finish the webinar with a live Q&A. Again, if you just logged on, be sure to enter your name and organization into the chat to enter today's prize draw. I'll pass it on to Cynthia to take it from here. Thanks, Cassandra. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to chat about license plate recognition in the various Canadian markets, what this technology offers, and how it can be leveraged within a parking operation. So we've been focused on parking now for 30 odd years. So you get to know a thing or two about what your clients and what their customers are expecting. And since most of us in the parking industry also happen to be parkers ourselves, it isn't a stretch for us to put on our specialist hats when we start talking about what our expectations are. Conversations about parking and parking experiences happen organically all the time. Think about a holiday season of 2019. You know, did you have to go to a mall and it was jammed full? And then you went home and you talked about your parking experience and you, know, you commiserated with other people, their parking experiences over that holiday season. And I'm sure you did like we all do. And you brainstormed all kinds of great ideas, what you can do that the mall could do rather uh, to make that parking experience better for you. Because at the end of it, we all want the same thing. We want parking experiences that are faster, they're less cumbersome, and they're always safe. And on the business side of things, the owners want all of these things as well first, but then they have extra needs and they need extra layers. They need data, they need analytics, and they need revenue. So LPR is one of these technology offerings. It's gaining traction worldwide, and it's going to help them meet all of these widespread requirements for their parking operations. LPR used to be a pretty fancy premium piece of tech and only the biggest companies would even entertain, let alone implement such a big fancy system. So today, technological advancements and all that fun stuff, like everything else, it has made the technology more reliable as brought down the costs. So now we're seeing LPRs that are starting to crop up all over the place and doing all kinds of things. So some of these things, they're helping the police enforce speed limits in vulnerable areas, uh, school zones and community safety zones. They're enabling automated billing for vehicles using four highways. They're deploying them all over Canada to help parking enforcement patrols be more efficient in large lots. And I'm gonna wait until the slides here catch up. One more person. There we go. And they're providing a data rich and hands free and a physical credential free permit access control solution. And most recently, LPR we're seeing is being deployed as the core technology in frictionless, free flowing parking operations that are centering on the license plate being the ticket and the force behind tariff calculations rather than tickets or license plate manually entered by a parker. So LPR is a comprehensive solution for sure. And over the next year or two, we're really gonna start seeing LPR in more locations and in more sectors. 
It's not just for big international airports anymore. Smaller airports have certainly made the move to LPR, as have top tier commercial properties. Mixed use developments are getting into it. Post secondary institutions have been using it for a while now. And municipalities are starting to question and implement uh, the value of the LPR. So these clients are all looking for the ease and the flexibility and the metrics that really only an LPR system can give them. And the options to have LPR configured either on its own or paired with either a gated or an ungated system is making it more attractive. So regardless of the LPR configuration, a client might choose for the individual facility. The pace of technology growth and innovation means that for these property owners and these managers, they can work with their technology provider to really customize a solution for their operation, their needs, and their objective. It really does provide uh, an abundance of technology and digital wealth that helps provide businesses and parking programs with the opportunities that they need to excel in that part of their business. Now, since my panelist, uh, co-panelist rather, Jay is gonna dive deeper into these benefits a bit later on. So we're gonna move on to the next section here. So the basics of LPR. But the core of any LPR solution is the license plate. It's now the credential. And it doesn't matter if that's a transient ticket, a flex pass, a monthly permit, it all boils down to the letters and the numbers on the plate. That means that whether it's for starting a parking transaction, giving that access, or allowing enforcement, the license plate now becomes that common denominator. It's a key piece of data that allows everything to happen digitally and virtually. So as I mentioned earlier, an LPR solution can be configured to operate either on its own, or it can be integrated with a gated or a non-gated solution. So this is where your relationship with your parking technology and management partners really going to come into play. They should be able to review all of the options that are suitable for your parking operation. And they should be making data and experience-based recommendations that are going to meet your primary and secondary objectives. It doesn't matter what they are. They might be revenue-driven. They might be focused on asset protection. They might be centered on the collection of data and metrics to improve the user experience at your facility. So regardless of what your requirements and your goals are, that customized solution can be designed for any operation or any parking uh, setup that you might have. And it could be the same at all of your locations, or it could be individualized for each location, or maybe you're just a standalone and it's just one single location. None of that matters. It can all be really focused and, and centered on what you need for your operation. All right, so for some of you, uh, you know, you might be wondering how the combination of LPR and parking works. So there are uh, different LPR models and configurations, as Cassandra touched on uh, during the agenda, and I am going to let Jay talk about these things. But I'm going to get a bit of a jump on him. I'm going to let you know that they range from tickless models with gated parking technology, uh, convenient exit models with gated technology, and completely frictionless models with non-gated technology. How an LPR system works is pretty straightforward. And if you've ever driven on the 407 in Southern Ontario, a video toll route in the States, uh, if you visited uh, the Terminal 1 parking garage at Toronto Pearson Airport, or if you've gone down to Billy Bishop in downtown Toronto, you've experienced it. So with it, without getting into all the technicalities, which you can read about here, uh, and it's also literally why we have Jay on the call here, uh, the driver is going to approach that entry lane of a parking facility. The camera is going to take either video or a picture of the front of the car, and now the back end and all magic is going to happen. Back end takes over, rather, and the magic happens. So the technology is going to figure out where the license plate is, and figure out all the angles, and make sure that it's all sized correctly so we can do the next pieces. And this is when it's going to start slicing and dicing all the characters and digits on the plates. It's going to figure them out, uh, figure out if the letters are numbers and it's going to check them against the rules from the province that that license plate is from. Um, thank you for inviting me into this uh, discussion, Cassandra. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you and sharing our experience at uh, Transit City at the Smart Centers uh, VMC or what we call the SMAT VMC. Vaughan Metropolitan Center Development. So just to give our uh, 
the people participate in the context of what, uh, what the transit city development is. The transit city development is a combination of uh, five uh, condo uh, towers, uh, residential towers and mixed use towers. And three of the towers are already completed and occupied, whilst two uh, are under construction. So uh, in between uh, one of the two towers, uh, tower one and tower two, we have a seven uh, level uh, above ground parking deck, uh, which uh, we've just completed and has been in operation for just about a year. And uh, this is where we introduced uh, the ALPR as part of our parking infrastructure. So why did we select ALPR in, as part of our parking infrastructure? We, we started off with basically having Gita system, which everybody is very familiar with. And as technology, as Cynthia has actually said previously, as, as technology provided us the ability to uh, integrate and modernize the LPR uh, into most uh, uh, infrastructures, we thought about how do we improve our customer's experience. And uh, it kept on coming up that we needed a process whereby our customers could basically transit and basically uh, interact with our systems easily. So all our efforts pointed towards the LPR. So we basically installed our IPR or the ALPR um, into our infrastructure as a gated LPR system. Um, as Cynthia said earlier on, you could actually have it a mix in use or you could actually mix a gated with an LPR or have a gated with a non an LPR with a non gated system or as a standalone totally frictionless LPL system. Uh, you can actually morph it in whatever way you want. So I'm just going to talk about the benefits that we've achieved uh, at the uh, uh, Transit City with the LPR. As I said earlier on, uh, the most important part was the ease of customer uh, in, inter interaction with the system, uh, which basically allowed our customers, our residents to basically flow through the gates easily without having to figure out or scratch their head, how do I go through the system, which is something that we notice very often when people who are not used to a system uh, interact with a very sophisticated or, or modern gated uh, parking system. Uh, reduction of operating cost. As you all know, uh, this is a very, very important uh, part of uh, business. Uh, you don't go into business to lose money, you go into business to make money. And whilst you're making money, you're always looking at how do you become efficient and efficiency comes from reduction of costs. So with the LPR and with the system that we installed, uh, we were able to reduce our manpower deployment to our gates rather than having a uh, uh, a, a, a CSR, a customer service re representative, or in a short word, an attendant at the gate, uh, we were able to centralize our, our operations and you know, not have anybody there because the cameras were our eyes and our ears, we could see everything happening, we could get data and we could respond as, as soon as we had any issues. Uh, of course, we were able to increase the flow of traffic through our facilities because uh, we could either use the LPR as a single system or we could use it with a gated system or whenever time we have an issue with our gates or somebody um, vandalized our gates, the LPR took over. So it provided redundancy to the gated system or whenever there was a need to basically move people through uh, during peak periods, all we had to do was to fold the gates and let the LPR take charge, and it works. Of course, increased revenue. That's a very, very uh, important aspect of business. Uh, because we were able to move people through easily, uh, people fell in love with our park infrastructure, and uh, we tend to have a lot of people visiting us and parking our uh, facilities, hence we increased our revenue. Um, Integration with other parking systems, just as uh, Cynthia said, uh, the L ALPR gave us that ability to integrate our systems with other parking systems that we had. 
uh, already in place. It did not form as, it didn't come, rather it was, we were able to integrate it with all the gated systems, non-gated systems, and everything basically mishmashed together and we were able to uh, uh, operate the systems without having to have additional costs, additional training for our, uh, our uh, staff who basically manage and operate the systems. Uh, most of most important in terms of our customers, it gave them that ability for multiple uh, payment collection uh, format. Or we could collect money using credit card, uh, cash, alternate uh, accounts, uh, payable systems, or like if we had a contract or a lease with a tenant, um, the system was able to give us that ability to uh, integrate with other. Uh, uh, softwares that made payments and made transactions easy. Uh, also, the customers who were paying on foot, it was easy. If they remember their, their license plate number, good. If they don't, maybe they will have pulled a ticket. And if they, they get to the gate and they don't even remember or they didn't pull a ticket, the system remembers their vehicle license number and thereby they, they can easily pay at the gate. So it was ease of payment matters. It just made everything interesting and a good experience for our customers. Uh, we've also benefited in the fact that we could actually, our customers could actually pre-register their uh, uh, reservation even before they get to our facilities. So we are a transit location. There are a lot of people traveling from Barrie coming down to Toronto, and they basically stop at our location before they get onto the subway. So what do you want to do if you're rushing and you hit uh, traffic on the, on the 400? Uh, you could easily you know, pre-register your stall uh, or pre-reserve your stall before you even leave home, and you'll be guaranteed a stall by the time you get to our location. That was one of the benefits that we didn't even realize we were going to encounter that came out of ALPR. And it's been a really selling feature for our parking facilities here. Next slide, please. So in addition to all these major uh, opportunities, we were also able to derive some indirect uh, opportunities from the system. Uh, as I said earlier on, um, the ALPL became either a redundant, a redundant system when our gate fails. And uh, rather than having to now deploy manpower, uh, the LPL would take charge and become that redundant system that will basically interact and uh, uh, ensure that all the people who come in, all our customers who come into our parking facilities are charged for the time that they're there. Also, it gave us that ability to now sort of have a template for a total frictionless uh, uh, facility in the future if we wanted to go that route, uh, as well as it gave us an opportunity to replace our gated systems with, non, uh, with the, AIR, the AIRPR cameras, whereby we now have a non-gated uh, for infrastructure. Uh, it improved the security and enforcement for us because our enforcement was not accurate. There was no argument of, oh, you did, I wasn't on that parking lot or that was not my vehicle. We captured your license plate, we captured the time, we captured the date, and also we captured the location. So it made our enforcement much, much uh, better and reduced what we call the slippage in terms of revenue. As you know, one of the major part of uh, parking is when you can collect because either people jump the curb or people basically do not pay. Um, having that ability to capture license plates, location time uh, has been extremely helpful to our enforcement team. Um, also analytics, we're able to collect data so that we can offer more services or better services to our customers. I'll give you a typical example. We know people who come in very early. We know the early birds. We could basically now use that to be more dynamic in our pricing. But most of all, we found out that there are people who were rushing to work and didn't have the time to get a car wash. We were able to utilize this system 
to actually target those that we felt that we need a car wash and offer them a car wash system. Something that we didn't plan initially, but became a benefit from having ALPR. Uh, of course, uh, financial management was easy. Uh, the ALPR comes with softwares and it's able to integrate with other softwares, which gives somebody like me the ability <clears throat> to actually centrally uh, manage the financial uh, 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 reporting uh, from all, all our parking lots. Uh, all the information are available real time. You can see it as it happens and it makes um, you know, the work of our accounts receivable even much better. As I said earlier on, centralization was something that actually became a, 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 a home uh, uh, sort of a home phrase for us. Um, because of the LPR, we were able to centralize all our operations. We were able to put in a, a supervisor who could actually see all the packing facilities from one location. Likewise, also assist customers from that location without having to put in uh, CSRs or attendance in each individual locations. Uh, this was tremendous uh, advantage for us. We were able to reduce our manpower, of course, increase our revenue and our profit margin. And uh, the last point, uh, one of the benefits that we're currently also exploring and we're also seeing from the system is that ability to integrate with third-party system and media application integration. Uh, what I mean by this is like, we providing that link or providing what we call tokens to third-party organizations like uh, parking.com, honk, where park, whereby you could actually have your parking facility, facilities represented or seen on those third-party uh, uh, applications giving them your availability, your rates, and um, uh, even direction to your parking lots. So these are all um, even more of the uh, uh, attributes and benefits that you could actually gain from uh, um, ALPR, and which we are currently enjoying. And I must say, it is the future. It's the future to parking, and I can see our facilities becoming more frictionless or probably 100% frictionless within the next four or five years. Thank you. Thank you for that, Michael. That was very informative. It is great to see how LPR has enabled Smart Center's Transit City to create a truly frictionless parking experience. I'm happy to hand it off to Jay to discuss the growing interest in LPR across all markets. Thank you, Cassandra. So um, I'm just gonna go into more detail about what Cynthia was introducing earlier. Um, so firstly, obviously there's a growing interest um, in all types of various markets and we're experiencing more and more requests from different vendors and different uh, customers from different industries about ALPR and how that can integrate into their current system or um, be applied to a new system. So in general, um, this is how LPR works. It, it basically works no matter what the shape or size of the facility is, and it offers an abundance of efficiencies, as Cynthia was mentioning earlier. Um, so we can benefit. We can benefit with LPR in, in in the sense that it can introduce frictionless and touchless access control for employees or for regular parkers, condo parkers, etc. It'll enhance your security and enhance um, the enforcement type of programs that will um, save you on, on costs and it'll increase, increase your accuracy. Um, it would also advance your reporting and business intelligence. Um, it'll give you a lot more data to work with um, that you can use for various purposes. It'll also allow for greater revenue capture um, that, will, that can be fueled by dynamic pricing models that I'll be getting into more detail later. It also gives you opportunities for marketing and loyalty programs, as Michael was mentioning, um, depending on specific parkers, how often they come in, you have the opportunity to give them some loyalty programs. And lastly, it'll, it can integrate with last mile logistics, such as ghost kitchens, EV charging, et cetera. So I'll be going into that in more detail later on. So just to give a few specific examples, um, obviously we, we had the, the excellent example that Michael gave with the, um, with the condos at uh, BMC. 
Um, in more general cases, we, we currently have these deployed at airports. So a, lo a, lot of, um, a lot of ways that airports use the LPR system is for employees to get in, a, in and out of the employee lots. Um, we find that they obviously have a different, uh, they have many ways to get into the system, like in case the LPR doesn't work, for whatever reason, um, they have their key card to get in, but um, a lot of people prefer the LPR system because it's faster and they don't have to roll down their windows. Um, so people like those little conveniences, they add up. Um, one of the other things that airports really like to use the LPR system for is because generally people par park at the airport for a longer period of time. If they, for example, lose their ticket and um, they, they try to call the intercom, call for assistance and say, hey, I lost my ticket. Um, the, the people in the monitoring station at the airport can simply look up uh, what their license plate, the customer's license plate and determine exactly what time the person came in to charge them a fair price. Um, some other examples we are looking at is in university colleges or municipal parking lots where LPR can really be used for um, enforcement purposes. So this, these are more gateless lots that um, people just coming through and you can determine um, by a plate-by-plate -plate system that this person is supposed to park in this particular lot for X amount of time and if they stay for longer than that, um, you can send the enforcement team over in a, in a timely manner to um, enforce that particular parker. Um, some other examples that LPR can be easily used in include speech hill, healthcare, stadiums, um, anywhere where people with vehicles come in, LPR can be beneficial in various ways. So, as I was mentioning, LPR can be used in a lot of different possible ways. So I'm going to get into that uh, now. So for the first thing that LPR can really do is enhance your security programs. Um, just to get into more detail about the different types of lists that LPR can enable include um, what's called the access list, which is used for employees, contractors, permit holders, or VIPs. So these are your parkers that are supposed to be in the system. Um, they're, they're supposed to be allowed in the parking lot. And the LPR system would read their license plate at the entry gated lot and effectively open the gate automatically and allow them in. Same thing on the exit. It would just read their license plate at the exit and open the, the gate to allow them out without any kind of friction or any kind of additional input from the user. The other type of list that, that LPR can enable is called a block list. So for example, if you don't want uh, anybody going into a particular area of a parking lot, you can restrict that access and say only these people are allowed, nobody else is allowed. So this is commonly converted into a notification list due to um, a lot a lot of facilities having an on-ramp, in which case you don't want to block the vehicle from um, effectively entering the, the space. You just want to um, effectively notify them that they're not supposed to be in there. But um, you know, a lot of different facilities don't have the infrastructure to have the, have the vehicle back off of a, of a ramp, especially if there's vehicles behind them. So we convert this into a um, a notification list in those scenarios, but this is more commonly used in overhead door scenarios at the street level. So if somebody is coming in from the street and they're supposed to be turning into a parking lot with an overhead door, um, you can easily block the access at that point so they don't even get in. And speaking of the notification list, that's the third type of list that LPR enables, which is another name for it is, is the be on lookout list, uh, which is commonly referred to as BOLO. So these vehicles um, can be notified when, when these vehicles enter the parking lot and this uh, notification can be sent to the enforcement team, for example, to um, then get to that vehicle and enforce that vehicle for whatever scenario you might need to. The other thing with the um, LPR that it enables is increased enforcement accuracy. So as Michael was mentioning earlier as well, um, that can be really beneficial because the LPR automatically records and associates license plates with the vehicle images for any kind of violations. It'll also increase your, increase your patrolling accuracy and reduce any kind of disputes the customer may have. 
um, because you have the exact data, exact time, and exact location that the vehicle came into the parking lot. It also eliminates the need for patrol officers to manually go around and check every single license plate because you have that plate getting every entry and every exit. You know exactly when each vehicle is entering and exiting. Also, the LPR allows for automatically accounting for any kind of special rules associated with permits. So for example, if you have parkers um, that are supposed to only stay in a lot from nine to five, and you know if they haven't exited by 5 p.m., um, that notification can be sent out and, and basically the enforcement team can then take action as necessary. The Just to get into more detail about the enforcement with ALPR, it can be done in um, basically two ways. So one is LPR enforcement by camera, in which case the cameras are mounted on a vehicle and somebody from the enforcement team would drive around the, the parking lot and um, it would automatically capture all of the, the plates that are parked inside that parking lot. So this is a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient compared to what's called LPR enforcement by foot. Um, the good thing with, with the LPR enforcement by foot, for example, if security or somebody from the enforcement team is doing that, um, it's a really visible nature of, um, of security because you see people walking around the parking lot. Um, and these patrollers would have access to LPR, LPR technology on their cell phone, for example where they would use the cell phone's camera to capture the license plate and that'd be automatically recorded in the, in the back end. So it's a little bit slower, but a little bit more secure and provides other benefits. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is what's called frictionless access that Cynthia introduced briefly. So basically when I, when I say friction, what I mean is anytime a customer needs to stop or um, interact with any of the parking equipment. That's what we really really mean by, by friction. So if somebody's stopping at a gated lot to then try to figure out how they can enter or exit that parking facility, um, that would be what's called friction. They would have some uh, time to interact with that device and try to figure out how they can pay or how they can enter, um, which we do see at various of our, of our facilities. So what ALPR really does is it allows for the facility to go in what's called the frictionless access mode in where um, the license plate is read and automatically processed as the parker just drives in without any kind of stoppages or anything like that. Um, so these license plates would be replacing any kind of physical tickets or digital permits. And what this does is it allows for a ticketless and safe access solution for all visitors to your parking facility. Um, so the other thing that uh, ALPR enables is what, what we like to call a far, find my car assistance program. So depending on the size of your lot, um, people can sometimes forget exactly where they park. And uh, what we have is um, effectively you, you can you can have cameras and sensors that are situated above um, each parking stall, and these cameras also read the license plates of the vehicles that are parked there. So if a, a parker, for example, at an airport goes to vacation for a week or more, and then they come back and they completely forget where they park, which happens from time to time, uh, they can simply input their license plate into um, a kiosk of some sort that would then show them exactly where the car is parked, in which stall and how to get there. So. ALPR can be used in, in that scenario as well. In addition, this kind of system, because it has cameras above each stall, it increases the security of your facility. So um, these cameras can be set up to a system that reports 24 seven exactly what's going wrong in the garage at, at any time of the day. So that can be helpful when it comes to any kind of incidents that may happen in the parking lot, for example. So the other thing that um, the, the find your car and, and those specific sensors above each parking lot enable is what's called the dynamic pricing opportunities. So because you have control over um, who, which license plate parks on which stall, you can really narrow down and get a dynamic pricing rate structure, which can be based on the time of day, the date of the year, um, 
a type of customer that that's sparking. For example, you can have a different base structure for electric vehicles versus um, you know the, the standard um, stalls, and you can have a what's called like a premium stall section where um, it's a little bit closer to the, the main facility that, that people go to, so they have to walk a little bit less. You can have a higher pricing, a slightly higher pricing for that compared to the regular stalls that are a little bit further away. So it really gives you a lot of that flexibility as well as that data that um, you can use to increase revenue, increase efficiency in your parking facility. Now, speaking of data, um, ALPR is obviously very um, data-driven and it allows for additional business intelligence and data collection. Um, so really you can understand who enters and exits your lot, um, where and when they enter as, as in addition to how long they park in a specific stall. You can get all that information with ALPR. Um, the other things you can do is um, you're, uh, you're able to get the peak day and time. So with the peak day and time, you can, you can um, once again, revisit your dynamic pricing opportunities to increase the price during certain periods of the day to make a little bit more revenue. Um, you can also check the frequency and visits of any kind of repeat customers for loyalty programs that Michael was mentioning earlier. Um, in addition, the ALPR would allow you to recognize how many visitors you get out of your certain jurisdiction. So um, for example, at airports, you, you get a lot of more international um, drivers from the US, for example, versus a site that's not as popular for international users. Um, you can get all that data with ALPR. In addition, some ALPRs um, allow you to get the make and model of vehicles. So you can understand a little bit of demographics okay, these type of high-end vehicles tend to come into these lots a little bit more than the other lots, and you can try to use that data for your, to your advantage. In addition, the ALPRs can be used in, in um, conjunction with validations, reservations, and different types of permits that allow you to uh, increase the, the better the user experience overall. Uh, the other thing that LPRs will will um, enable is what's called last mile integration. So um, as Michael was mentioning, the license plate can be really used as a um, credential to get into, for example, a car care service for a car wash, or if the vehicle is electric, they, the, the license plate can be used for electric vehicle charging. Um, if they're there to pick up certain, um, you know, if they're, if they're there to pick up some sort of food that can be used in that scenario as well. And the list goes on and on for all these types of different integrations that LPR enables and enhances. The other thing that LPR can um, really do is you can use it for targeted marketing. So for example, um, customers that meet a specific criteria of frequency of coming into the lot, for example, or the type of model or make of their car, you can target those specific customers with specific loyalty programs or promotions, depending on your needs. Now, I'm gonna be talking about um, ALPR from the more um, use case scenario of parking. Um, and I'm going to go into more detail about the three types of different models that Cynthia mentioned, which is the ticketless, frictionless, and the convenient exit models. So in a ticketless scenario, in a, in a parking scenario, um, the customer would enter the gated lot without obtaining a ticket. Um, so their license plate would be their credential. And then on the exit, based on how long they've stayed in the parking facility, the amount will automatically be calculated based on their license, um, at which point the customer can then pay for that, um, for that amount due. Now, the frictionless uh, scenario that we have here takes that to another step where um, the customer can freely enter the parking lot without stopping at any gate and having the, the LPR system, you know, really read the license plate. It would be read automatically as a drive by, so they wouldn't have to stop at all. And in this case, the payment options would be um, on a pay station where they would effectively enter in their license plate and pay based on the amount of time they stayed. Um, the other option would be on a, on a cellular phone where they can enter their license plate on an app 
or a website, for example, and that can be used to pay for their parking duration. Um, the third option would be they could just drive out and their license plate would be recorded. Um, and basically the invoice, depending on their license plate, would be mailed directly to them to pay after the fact. Um, so in this scenario, it's more of an honor system that uh, doesn't rely on stopping people at the exit um, from exiting the facility. It's more like um, an honor system that you, you're trusting people to pay for the parking that they stayed there. So the third type of scenario is called the convenient exit, in which case, once again, this is um, a gated lot and people come in with the ALPR or they can come in with a specific ticket if they don't want to use the LPR system. Um, the payment options are once again on the cell phone or a pay station. And then what happens at the exit is um, the, the license plate is automatically detected and that association with the ticket that they came in with is already made and the system knows that this, this ticket is already paid for. So they don't have to drive up, try to find their paid ticket and insert it into the exit column. Um, it would automatically detect that this person has paid for their ticket, so just let them out, which increases the efficiency and, and the throughput at the exit area. Now I'm going to be going into more detail about the different hardware and software components. So um, for hardware components, there's really a few things to consider. Um, first is the mounting option. You can have different LPR systems be mounted on the wall, on a pole, or in a cabinet in a closed camera, um, which can be useful, especially if you need additional lighting for, for low lighting conditions. Um, the LPR camera specifications that you should really consider are um, color versus infrared. So depending on your facility and your lighting conditions, you might want, you might want to go for um, a color only camera or a infrared only camera or a combination of both. Um, the other thing you should really consider is what's called wide dynamic range. So um, especially for outdoor lots where there's a little from sunlight, you want something that can do wide dynamic range to get the um, get the right exposure in the right areas of the of the region of interest of the license, uh, license plate camera. Um, the resolution and the optical zoom capability is also important because um, depending on how far your camera is situated from the actual lane where the vehicle is expected to be, you want to make sure that it can get the the, the pixel density required to capture the license plate accurately. And then the last thing to consider is the shutter speed, which ties into how fast the vehicles are, are, are entering your lot. So if you have a, a lane where vehicles are expected to stop, you don't need that much of a low shutter speed. Um, whereas if, for example, on a toll highway um, where vehicles are going at 100 kilometers an hour plus, you want something with a really small shutter speed to reduce the motion blur and capture the license plate accurately. In terms of the software, um, you really want to look out for the types of algorithms the license plate detection is using and the types of OCR, which is the optical character recognition that it uses to actually get the characters of the license plate. Um, the other things you want to consider is how fast is the system if it's a gated lot, especially um, how long will the parker be waiting at the gated lot for while the system reads the license plate and, and sends it over to the database to, to store. Um, the read accuracy is obviously really important because if your system is completely relying on a license plate based system and the read accuracy isn't high enough, then you're going to be losing a lot of potential revenue. Um, some ALPR systems can also provide additional information such as vehicle color, make and model, which may or may not be useful for your use case. Um, in addition, some ALPR models can also detect the speed and direction of the vehicle. So if you have a um, non-controlled lane where vehicles can go bo both enter and exit. Um, you, you'd want to know the direction that the vehicle is traveling to effectively um, associate that with an entry or an exit into the parking facility. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is what's called the read ranges. Um, so for typical North American plates, um, we usually say that N is the total amount of characters in the plate, which goes up to, it ranges from two to eight. Um, two is really, really rare because those are really only used in custom plates, but it can go up to eight characters. And when the license plate system reads eight out of eight characters, for example, um, there'll be what's called an N read. And then if you misread, if the system misreads one character, it can, it's called N minus one. If it misreads two characters, then it's N minus two, so on and so forth. So some systems can, um, 
successfully associate, uh, for example, if somebody came in and, and it read ABCD123, but on the way out, it only read ABCD12. Um, some systems can associate that entry with the exit and just say, okay, this is most likely the same plate, even though it's an N-1 read, um, I'm gonna let this person out because I know they paid for their ticket, for example. Now, the last thing I wanna, the second to last thing I wanna talk about are some of the potential challenges with LPR systems. Obviously, um, there's environmental challenges. So when it's raining, there's snow or there's a lot of dirt on the ground, um, it, can it can really affect the performance of the system because the license plate system won't be able to read it as well. In, in addition, um, there's also sometimes physical damage to the plate or there's no plate at all, in which case you need a backup system to let customers in or out of your parking facility. Um, lighting can also really affect the, uh, the license plate. So if there's a lot of sunlight, that there's a lot of glare, or if there's shadows, or it's nighttime when there's no ambient lighting, you want to be able to um, account for those challenges and, and really um, try to get, it to get it so that the system can read it in all those different conditions. In addition, um, the angle and distance can, can really have an effect. So if you have a lane where um, there's, there's a sharp turn, um, those angles will be a little bit uh, challenging in, in certain conditions. So some of the solutions to these challenges are implementing an alternative entry um, and tracking tickets and, and, and um, any kind of other credential in some other ways. The other thing you can do is strategically install the cameras and install high quality LPR cameras that can handle these different types of conditions and um, ensure that your accuracy stays as high as possible. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is um, the future improvements in LPR. So these are some of the foreseen improvements with the technology. Obviously, um, as Cynthia and Michael mentioned that the technology is constantly improving. That's increasing the speed of the system overall in, in addition to the accuracy while reducing cost. And these new algorithms are better optimized and, and, they're, and they're always being optimized and fine tuned to improve the overall performance. In addition, um, use of upcoming specific artificial intelligence technologies opens up even more potential possibilities to, um, to really use the LPR system in a, in a smarter and more efficient way. Thank you, Jay. Now that we are aware of the various possibilities associated with LPR, uh, there are a few questions to take into consideration before making the investment. So in order to confirm that your LPR solution will be effective for your organization, you'll first want to consider all of its hardware, software, and operational possibilities that will allow you to get the most out of your investment. So these are just a few of the questions you will want to ask yourself before you uh, can start considering investing in LPR. So aside from the ones mentioned, there are many questions that you can that can come to mind when considering investing in LPR. Uh, with that being said, we will now be addressing all of your questions in the chat, starting with a question uh, for Cynthia. So will your LPR integrate into security ISMS, specifically CURE 9000, or does it operate solely on its own system? All right, so information security management systems, that's kind of the next step for all technology to integrate with. Uh, the LPR systems can be standalone systems uh, if we're only looking for data collection. We wanna tie them into the ISMSs. That's the things we have to stop, um, we have to talk about whether or not those integrations are ready. So, you know, that's a conversation to have with your parking technology provider. They'll let you know. If not, uh, it's usually pretty simple. Uh, you get your R&D team involved with um, taking a look at the software. And it's just a matter of either facilitating a handshake or doing some data mapping to make sure the information gets to the right places. So, I hope that answers the question. Awesome, thank you, Cynthia. Uh, the next question is, is it possible to receive payment receipts? If so, how? Um, I'll leave this up to Jay to answer. Um, so if I understand this cor question correctly, um, you're talking about the payment receipts from when in a frictionless scenario, somebody goes in and then goes out and that, um, that basic transaction is automatically invoiced to the person. Um, when they would pay online, 
they usually would get a, a receipt copy in an email or of some digital form. Um, that would be your receipt for, for that parking duration, if I understood your question cor correctly. Great, thank can you, I just, Jay. Can I add on to that, Cassandra? Sure. So in a paid parking environment, what's gonna happen is that the LPR is gonna be connected to the parks system. So whether it's a gated system or it's a multi-space system, and the payment devices on those systems, whether it's a physical payment device, a chip and pin pad, or an app, those are going to be what's processing the payments. So therefore, those are going to be the pieces that are actually providing the payment receipts. It's not going to be the camera system itself. Thank you for that insight, Cynthia. Um, another question for Jay. Will the system, along with the patrol car, identify reported stolen vehicles in a parking lot? So um, that's one of the interesting things that can also happen with ALPR. What you can do is you can um, work with your local police authority if you if you if you like to in order to get that be a, be on lookout list of um, specific li license plates that were reported to be stolen. So that be on lookout list can be um, integrated within the parking. Um, within the ALPR system so that when the enforcement people drive by and it detects one of those plates, those notifications will be sent to the enforcement team, which can then be forwarded to the local police authorities if need be. Thanks, Jay. Um, a question for Cynthia. Uh, any issues or regulations for collecting and storing license plate information? So no, actually, because license plate information isn't considered to be personal information. Uh, so, you know, from that perspective, we're okay. On the other side, if it's uh, with us, specifically with Precise Park Lane, we have uh, secure data centers, we have redundant data centers. So all that information, I can speak for us, is always stored uh, in a very secure yeah. manner. And I would expect it to be the same with any provider. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, another question for Jay. Will this integrate with the HPASS system for use and payment? Um, another part to this question is, will families with many cars be able to input more than one plate associated with that HPASS? So um, specifically talking about the HPASS system, um, so that's one way of, of getting in and out of parking lots. So any kind of permits, whether it be HPASS or IPASS or any, any one of the passes that we currently use, it can be tied in with the LPR system. Um, it remains to be seen and it might be a little bit challenging to get multiple license plates associated to the same permit, especially if you want to enforce at the same time what's called anti-passback. So no two vehicles or two license plates or uh, that associated with the same account can, can enter at the same time in the, in the parking facility. But um, it's something that definitely can be done. Um, and that's something that we're looking into, but uh, ALPR would definitely allow you those kind of opportunities to, to be presented and to be used accordingly. Great, um, and to add on to that question, uh, if a customer refused to pay for parking and has been banned from a facility, does your system flag or disallow the offending vehicle access? Yeah, so that's really getting into the, the notification list once again. So if, if now a, a particular parker is um, problematic, for example, um, and they refuse to pay or they're tailgating frequently and, and, and not really paying for their, their uh, parking duration, then what you can do is you can either add them to what's called a block list or the notification list. The block list would basically prevent them from entering into the parking lot altogether, um, which may or may not be recommended because as a lane um, and it could cause issues and backups that you don't want. The other thing is you could have it as part of a notification list to um, notify the enforcement team, um, which could then be when that person next enters your parking facility. Great. Um, another question for Jay. Uh, we live in an area with incremental weather. How successful are cameras on recognizing plates today? So in terms of um, read accuracy, it really depends on a lot of different conditions. Um, but, you know, in ideal conditions, it can get, you know, upwards of 95, 96, 97% N. Um, and these are really dependent on the jurisdiction as well. So if you have um, a jurisdiction with good license plates that are not, you know, 
physically damaged too much, you'll get a lot higher accuracy versus somewhere um, where the plates are a lot older or the specific province or jurisdiction um, didn't go with a good vendor for the license plates and, and they degrade a lot over time. So that might reduce the accuracy in terms of environmental conditions, especially if, if in places where you get a lot of snow. Um, we noticed that really on the days that it's heavy snow, um, you might have some issues reading the license plates, but especially if the snow accumulates on the license plate itself, but then you can, um, you can Put in some, you can put in technology that mitigates that. For example, um, if you put license plate capture on the front plate and the back plate, um, usually one of those plates is good enough to read and, and capture the, lay, the plate properly. So that, for example, can be used to really increase your accuracy even more to um, prevent those types of environmental or other kind of um, Awesome. Uh, question for Cynthia. Has LPR been used in any type of on-street parking application to address occupancy for dynamic pricing or to strengthen data analytics? So there's always challenges with on-street parking in this kind of technology. So you have to have multiple camera captures on street. So something we're looking at, it's not something that uh, we have deployed yet. We do it absolutely in contained environments, closed parking lots, parking garages. Uh, we use fixed LPR. We use the uh, parking guidance cameras in order to help that. But on street, that's a different uh, a different challenge altogether. Uh, so like I said, we're looking into it, but it's, we're not there yet. Awesome. Um, for Jay, what are the read success rates for LPR systems? Um, so just talking about the read accuracy, once again, um, we're working with a variety of different LPR systems, trying to see um, how we can improve the read rates as much as possible. Um, obviously, for especially for scenarios where you're looking at frictionless systems, where you want as high accuracy of the LPR as possible. Um, we've successfully gotten above 90% and easily, um, and then we're, we're going above 95% and we're improving as much as we can um, slowly. But uh, yeah, 90% N and even 97, 98% N minus one is easily obtainable these days. Great, uh, and one last question for you, Jay. Um, so we have customers who have say uh, 100 staff, but only have 50% of staff working each day. How does an LPR system work in this scenario? So you can easily um, limit the access to particular staff on certain days of the week. So if you know um, a particular individual is, is coming in, um, let's say 9 a.m. and leaving by 6 p.m., you can limit their access to that time of the day, or you can limit it to so that this person can only come in on weekdays, whereas the other employees can come in on a weekend plus Monday, Tuesday. Um, so you can really limit those kind of options in terms of access, if, if that's what's of concern. Um, in addition, if you have multiple employee lots, um, you can use LPR in, in addition to um, what's called parking guidance systems that show parkers how many spots are left inside a particular employee parking lot or even the visitor's parking lot. So you can use that to count vehicles and say, okay, this is how many vehicle spots are left in this parking lot. So don't try to enter and waste your time looking for a parking spot. You won't find one. Just go to the next available lot if that's applicable. Great, thank you, Jay. Um, again, thank you to both the speakers and attendees for an insightful discussion, discussion on how automatic license plate recognition is your ticket to increase revenue, efficient enforcement, frictionless experiences, and business insights. If you haven't already, um, please enter your name and your organization name in the chat for a chance to enter our prize draw. Uh, we will be releasing the winner shortly after today's webinar within the coming days. We will also be following up with an email that you can respond to if any other questions do arise. That's a wrap for today, everyone. Thank you again.